TechJack presents Security Program Development, Information Security Policy. So what is a security policy? Organizations use a security policy as a written document that provides a high-level view of the company's security goals. Security policies can be classified as an administrative control that focuses on the management of IT risk and security. The policy provides the overall direction for security. Others within the organization use the security policy as an authoritative document to implement controls to enforce and follow the requirements of the security policy. Senior management is responsible for the creation of the security policy. At a minimum, they should endorse it as the security policy of the organization. Where do policies fit in? Well, let's take a look at that. We can use policies to help align the security function with the organization's strategy. As a function of strategic planning, creating your security policies is a surefire way to help align yourself with the goals of the organization, especially the business. Mission statements to help align business goals and strategy or departmental goals and objectives can be a critical uh, requirement to helping your security policies meet uh, all, of, um, all of the things that you wish to align uh, within that security policy. Business owners and mission and mission owners typically know exactly what it is that they need to achieve objective wise or deliverable wise. However, uh, working with the security teams, creating a security policy that helps them meet all their attestations, whether or not it's a law or regulatory requirement, can actually help save the organization when it comes to risk management or potential threats. When it comes to documentation, governance, and things like policies, processes, and procedures, security policy fits in the area that helps to get the organization to provide a high-level view of the company's security goals. Policies help define the main security objective and outlines the security framework of an organization. So when it comes to the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and the methodology you're going to use, the security policy is there to help you formulate that idea. The policy also helps to define major functional areas of data processing and defines for clarification all relevant terminology. So say, for instance, you're working with the enterprise architecture group. Um, coming to a consensus when it comes to vocabulary and terminology is vital. You don't want to misrepresent something or prov provide the wrong context for a particular issue. So terminology and having the same terminology across the board, board is important. So using your security policy to perform that uh, is a very valuable uh, task. And when it comes to where the policy fits when it comes to documentation and governance, uh, as you can see, uh, the policy is and gives a reason for why it is that we do what we do, um, and especially when it comes to what our goals are and what our expectations are. So let's go ahead and go back and see where this would fit in. Security policies are one of multiple document types used to provide governance over the actions, configuration, and risk management tactics an organization may adopt and implement to meet security compliance requirements. Other document types are guidelines, which provide guidance, usually not mandatory, but they help to steer people, processes, and technologies in the right direction. Procedures, which are step-by-step -step, uh, documentation on what it is that a particular person or system will do in order to make sure that the integrity of a process is kept. Standards, which provide the requirements, usually they're standards that could have been adopted via NIST or CIS or another benchmarking uh, vendor. And then your policy, uh, which explains why you do what you do as an information security program, uh, sets the goals and the expectations for that security program. Your security policy has various scopes. 
When creating your security policy, one of the first things you want to define is its purpose. What is the need for the security policy? Well, that's protection of confidentiality, integrity, and availability, of course. However, there may be some specific business requirements, regulations, compliance, or just things that you want to do to help mitigate risk that you want to put in your security policy. And your purpose would then be identified there. Your scope describes the people, systems, facilities, and the organizations covered by your policy. So you're able to set a more granular uh, scope on what it is uh, that the particular policy may uh, adhere to. Responsibilities, uh, which set the scope for particular staff like information security specialists, senior management, employees, they all have a hand in keeping the organization safe. So your security policy helps to define the roles and the responsibility associated with those roles when it comes to certain activities. Compliance, or how do you get a measurement of your security program in a moment of time? Also, what happens when someone violates a control or a policy? Well, compliance is there to help establish the framework and the ideas behind your security program as a measurement and what happens when something is violated. The other facets of security policies are stages, the types of security policies you can create, and enforcing your security policies. So let's take a quick look at some of those. So let's cover the stages associated with the creation of a security policy. In the initial stage, personnel draft the security policy based on the needs of the organization. This may be a formal, nearly complete draft of the policy or an initial proposal to senior management ident identifying the needs and the objectives of the policy. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a fully fleshed out draft of the policy. It can just be a proposal to get one created. In the approval stage, senior management approves the policy. It might take several iterations between the initial stage and the approval stage to create a document that senior management approves, but once approved, it provides direction for personnel to enforce the policy. In the publication stage, the policy is provided to the relevant personnel so that they can follow and implement it. In the implementation stage, a security policy is an important first step to provide security within an organization, but it isn't the final step by any means. After senior management has approved a security policy, Personnel must take steps to implement and enforce it. So this includes working with staff cross-functionally, personally, in order to get them aligned with the security policy and make sure that you have controls and measurements in place so that you can track the efficiency of the policy. In the maintenance stage, periodic reviews, such as once a year, ensure that the policy remains up to date it meets the needs of the organization, and it addresses current threats. There are three different types of policies as labeled and referred to via NIST Special Publication 800-12. Let's talk a little bit about those. A program policy is a policy typically used for the establishment of the organization's security information program. So that would be your overall security policy that covers a high level overview of what it is that you're establishing goal wise and expectation wise for your security program. An issue specific policy helps with assisting um, the strategy uh, implementation and the controls around a specific issue, such as things like disaster recovery and BCP, classification of data and its resources, network access policies, incident response policies, physical security, and acceptable use. These are all considered issue-specific policies. They're more granular in scope, smaller in scope, to deal with specific issues. 
system-specific policies are policies that govern the performance, the configuration, the control requirements, and the capabilities of specific system types, such as databases, web servers, or email servers. When categorizing your policies, you can categorize them in different formats, such as a regulatory policy, an advisory policy, and an informative policy. When enforcing security policies, take heed to some of the information below. Security policies are only useful when personnel know they exist. Imagine that. Governance rules the day. Implement, monitor, and measure. Enforcement is paramount and even more so with senior management's endorsement and championing of that policy. Otherwise, these policies can be rendered meaningless if they don't have the support behind them. They only have as much weight as the leaders in your organization uh, put behind them. So you want to make sure that your organization and senior management champion these policies so that everybody gets on board and align with them. Once the security policy documentation is reasonably completed, it can be used to guide decisions, train new users, respond to problems, and predict trends for future expansion. A security policy should not be an afterthought, but a key part of establishing an organization. And last but not least, things that should not go into a security policy. Well, sensitive data. You don't want to put sensitive data in your security policy. That's not a good idea. So make sure that your security policies don't contain any sensitive data or any data that you want uh, to protect. You don't want to put any reference to individuals when possible in your security policies. Security policies should be updated and modified rarely. Um, maybe once a year if you have a review process in order. Uh, the more that you put individual uh, references in, the more likely you are going to have to update your policy or modify your policy. You want to establish your roles in your organization and reference those roles when it comes to any references that you make. You also don't want to make any references to specific vendor tools. Uh, if you have a specific antivirus program or a specific SIM program or a firewall, you don't want to put the specific vendor name in there. As mentioned earlier, if you make a change and change your system, uh, your vendor tool, you'd have to update your policy more often than not. So you want to keep it generic when it comes to the capabilities of a particular tool. And that's going to do it for our quick review of what a security policy is and information security. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter, on YouTube, obviously here, on the website, or on LinkedIn. Please subscribe and follow. Let me know how you guys like this. I plan on doing a lot of videos when it comes to everything in IT security, but I wanted to cover some of the basics first, like policies and procedures and documentation, because those are the frameworks used to help establish your program. Um, I look forward to being able to put up new content, and please let me know how you guys like the video. Let me know if it helped, and until next time, catch you later.